Hello and welcome back to another video. Bit of a quick one this week, um, largely because I'm just about to go out for dinner. <laughs> um, I'm going to be talking about my uh, Nintendo DS collection. Um, it's not a large one. It's pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty good system. I prefer the. Um, I prefer my friend the Nintendo 3DS. I think the 3DS was just better for certain games. Um, they looked better to begin with. It had more exclusives on it. I was more interested in like Fire Emblem. But we'll start from the beginning. Overlord Minions. Um, this is a weird little game. I haven't put too much time into, to be honest with you. Um, it's a puzzle game based in the uh, Overlord universe. Specifically, you're the second Overlord, controlling these minions uh, more directly. This was part of Codemaster's attempt to kind of beef out their uh, development. <laughs> so they went, and oh, three games in the Overlord series, that'll do. Uh, which is great for people who love the first one, like myself. I'll probably do an Overlord video um, down the line, my time with that series, um, my memories of it. It was certainly one of the first 360 games I ever got, which was awesome. But yeah, Overlord Minions is perfectly serviceable. It's not my favourite game on the 3D, on the dear, but you know, it's uh, it's certainly, certainly okay. Um, yeah, Age of Mythology, oh, sorry, Age of Empires, the Age of Kings. Um, I will be perfectly honest with you. I got this with the intent of getting Age of Mythology. Because <laughs> there's an Age of Mythology spin-off, and that's what I thought this was. It isn't. Um, it's okay. It's, uh, I think it's turn-based. It's a turn-based um, RTS, basically. And I know that's, I know that's a juxtaposition, because it's real-time strategy. Turn-based. It's a turn-based strategy game based on an RTS. It's all right. That's really all I can say about it. it, it it's okay. I am put a substantial amount of time in it. In it, it's it's not something I'm super fuffed about. Um. Okay. You and you. So, um, here's another couple of games that I'll be doing um more of an in depth uh, video on down the line once I've played them a little bit more. We've got Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles The Ring of Fates and Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles The Echoes of Time. So I'll start with uh, I'll start with Echoes of Time. Echoes of Time is more of um it's basically the Wii version, except it's not as it's more ugly. Um <laughs> basically you can play um you can play on the Wii using this version. Um so it's kind of like the old um yeah, it's kind of like the old Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles where you needed like three game, three uh, or four actually, four. You needed four separate Game Boy Advances and four separate Game Boy Link cables to actually play that fucking game, which is ridiculous. Um, but I really like Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Getting the original working like that um, is is kind of a pipe dream of mine. I've got two Link cables currently, and I have one Game Boy Advance. I think my wife has a Game Boy Advance as well, so we may be able to play two-player, which would be lovely. But we'll see. Echoes of Time made it slightly easier, except you still needed three 3DSs and, um, four? No, three. You needed three 3DSs, and you needed, um, you needed, you needed a Wii. So, it's actually more expensive and harder to do. Thanks for that. Um, Echoes of Time, slightly easier. You just needed four DSs. Like, if you had four, three friends who played this, then then you're pretty golden. Um, not a bad game. Neither are bad. Neither are bad. I personally think the Wii version of Echoes of Time is better. But Rings of Fates is a perfectly serviceable action RPG. Um, it's just not one I'm super invested in. My favourite games in Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicle series are the original and My Life as a King. I think that's very telling <laughs> um, of the kinds of games... I'm into, as is pretty much any of the things I'm talking about here today. Okay, um, Great Empires Rome. It's a, it's a strategy game. It's a strategy game. I'm, I'm in a, I'm in the process of kind of collecting uh, a lot of strategy games for different consoles. Um, the plan is to kind of do 
one for each, like a video for each console I own, and then go over each um, strategy game on it, which could be exciting, but we'll see. Um, yeah, so Rome's fine. <laughs> I think Crusaders of Rome. The Crusader of Rome? Sorry, Centurion, Defender of Rome for the uh, Mega Drive is much better. Now, for an RTS that is really good, Lego Battle. Uh, Lego Battles. They did um, They did do a sequel to this with Ninjago, but I don't give a crap about Ninjago. Who cares about Ninjago if you're like, if you didn't really grow up with it. If it had been Bionicle, it would be slightly difficult. Uh, slightly different, but yeah, this is a this is a perfectly serviceable RTS. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. You've got Pirates, Kingdom, and uh, and Space um, all fighting it out, which is, which is great. Um... Here's a game I never thought would come to the th come to the DS. Warhammer 40k Squad Command. Now, again, this is very much a case of this version isn't as good as the as the as the PSP. However, it had two distinct advantages. Number one, it had local multiplayer, and it still does. If you've got a if you've got a DS, you can do wireless. You could do local. You could do a LAN version of um, Squad Command, which is very cool. It looks like shit, but that's most games on the DS. <laughs> Certain games, not so much. Um, Mario 64, for example. But yeah, Squad Command's a perfectly serviceable um, tactical uh, uh, tactical shooter sort of thing. It, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I think the PSP version looks better, plays better, is better. I think I still have it. I could be wrong, but you never know. Pack Picks. Uh, this was two quid. <laughs> it's two quid and it's a Pac-Man puzzle game. I love Pac-Man, so I had to get it. But that's really all I know about it. I haven't actually put... Is it two quid? Two pound fifty. Two pound fifty from the local CEA. It's not complaining. Um, okay, here's a kicker. Here's a good one. I, I wanted to get into the Advance Wars series. I really, really did. Because I loved Wargroove. I thought Wargroove was amazing. I thought Wargroove was a very, very, very good game. So I picked up Advanced Wars Dark Conflict. I really like this game. <laughs> like, I think it's really good. I think it's one of the better Advanced Wars games out there. I know, I think there are four. Not including Reboot Camp, which I will lead into. I played this before I played Reboot Camp, and I hated Reboot Camp. It was not very good. It was shit. I may get it again. It's on my list of games to... It, there's certain games where I want to try them again. I want to try them, see if they're as crap as I thought they were. But, yeah. That's, uh... That's one of them. Uh, Advance Wars Reboot Camp is certainly one of them. But, um, Dark Conflict is a... It's very good. It's a lot of fun. It's a bit more gritty, um, which is different, certainly. Um, it's way more anime, and it's way more post-apocalyptic, which would be nice. It would be nice if we had a Dark Conflict and whatever the hell the other one was called um, remake, but whether or not we're going to get that is uh, up for debate. Okay. Um, okay, fine. Atari Greatest Hits, Volume 1. Um, it's literally just... You know, I don't even know what's on here. <laughs> I think that's very telling. Missile Commanded Centipede. I think there's more. But, um, yeah, not great. Um, though, to be fair, the coolest thing about it is you can play the original... Uh, m the actual military training prototype commissioned by the US Army for Missile Command. Which is really fucking cool. <laughs> that's ex that's extremely cool. That's a good reason to own this, but other than that, leave it. I think you can get that version anywhere, uh, other places anyway, so a huge loss. Uh, okay, here's a series that did not come out in, in Europe too much, but this is one of the very few examples of it actually doing so. Custom Robo. Um, Custom Robo Arena specifically. Uh, yeah, it's... Um, I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't played too much of this. It's okay. It's okay. I can, I can kind of get the appeal of um, Custom Robo as a series. Really is one of Nintendo's most forgotten. They don't talk about it. Um, there's no playable characters in Smash. None of that. Guarantee you if they've gone, yeah, a main character from Custom Robo on the GameCube. Okay. 
playable character in Smash probably would have brought the series back and made itself shitloads. But who knows? It's basically Metabots. And I know there's people out there who would scream at me, but it, it's it's Metabots. It plays very much like Metabots, um, specifically Infinity on the GameCube. And if that's a horrible take, I don't care. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm going to be talking a bit about this next week uh, as part of a video on uh, ex my physical Xbox Live Arcade games. Uh, I'm, I'm redoing that video because I bought two at the weekend. <laughs> Um, that I want to talk about. So, uh, we've got Might and Magic Clash of Heroes. Really good game. Really good. One of my favourites. Um, I've got the D I've got the Switch version now, though, which has all the DLC. About the only advantage to this is the wireless multiplayer. Um, you only need one cart, or you can have two. It's really the only reason to play this. That being said, I think the artwork is just way better on this version. Don't be shiny. I just think it is. It, it's more classic anime less everything's very polished and shiny and looks like shit um yeah and i do stand by that um depending on the series but yeah not great um not great the new artwork i think it's not as good but that uh that artwork's really nice okay um oh yeah that is in here one of my first uh ds games uh i think my brother had it for some reason, no idea why, but my brother had it, and it's Wario Master of Disguise. I've played a decent amount of this. It It's good. It's good. I enjoy it. There's certain bits that are shit and unfair, um, just brutally unfair, or the puzzles are just too difficult, or it's just really fucking annoying. But of, of the Wario games I own, this is certainly my second favourite, because nothing beats Wario World ever. But well, Wario Master of Disguise is a perfectly legitimate, if hidden, um, game in that particular series. It's it's probably the first major 3DS, uh, sorry, DS, I keep saying 3DS, major DS game I've actually played. Um, Wario, Wario Master of Disguise, solid. 7 out of 10. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> Not my favourite game on the DS. We'll get to that. Um, if it doesn't fall out. <laughs> okay, here we go. It's... Of course, Sonic and the Dark Brother. No, no, it's not Sonic on the Dark Brotherhood. Um, this is a very tedious RPG um, by Bioware and ruined by Kenneth Penders. Um, yeah, so Ken Penders came along, went, those are all my characters, and they went, no, it isn't. It's not your characters, you fucking hack. Um, but then he went, I've got proof, and they fucking awarded it to him because he's an asshole. Um, yeah, Sonic and the Dark Brotherhood, though, had some interesting implications in the lore. It was supposed to have a sequel that was going to be really cool. It had new characters. You got to play as Eggman. Uh, like, it was cool. It, we, we haven't had a Sonic RPG since, and the big part of that is fucking Penders ruining everything, like he does always. Um, I've seen you with your creepy fucking art, and I've seen your attempts to sexualize Sonic characters officially. As well as introducing characters who are quite literally R words. <laughs> yeah. Horrendous. Um Garbage. Garbage writer. Garbage writer. Okay. Um I talked a little bit about this. Oh, it's French. It's a French version. Who knew? Um, Star Fox Command. It's okay. It's it's very much a it's very much um a strategy game done badly. I think it's not very fun. Which is a shame because the, the flight controls on the R-Wing are really good. They're really good. Um, And then they went, oh yeah, no, fuck you. And it's like, <laughs> okay, that's fine. Could have just made a new um, Star Fox on the DS and it would have been awesome. But no, unfortunately. Um, you can't even really play the multiplayer anymore. You sort of can. You can have two to six um, multiple ones and you can have single cart play, but it's not really worth it. It's not really worth it. It's very strategy game focused. Okay, here's a game I've wanted for quite some time. It's called Lost Magic. I picked it up for about £4.50 a couple of weeks ago. I thought this game was way more expensive, but it isn't, and that's great. But what I've loved is its artwork. Its artwork is gorgeous. So... There's the, I think, the American cover art 
that's the inner one. And I'm going to be honest with you, it's ugly as shit. Uh, it's like Panzer Dragoon CGI cover kind of shit. In comparison to this very Ghibli-esque looking uh, simple, it's simple as balls and I love it. It's, I love it. It's great. So this is kind of an RTS, kind of an RPG um, mixed together, which I'm always a f sort of fan of that idea. Um, there's a game called Ancient Empires or something like that on the on the PC um, that got forgotten about. Or it's Ancient Empires 2, something like that. But yeah, um, Lost, uh, Lost Magic's really cool. It's really cool. Again... Local play. Uh, well, not local play. Multi-cart play, single-cart play. Very cool. I love that little feature. That's probably my favourite thing about the original DS, is it. you could just download... You only needed one version of the game to play multiplayer, and that's cool. Um, I need to play more of this. It's kind of pride of place at the moment, um, next to my favourite game. Uh, but yeah, Lost Magic, heartily recommend. Uh, I need to play more of it, and I will. Okay. I bought this game, I bought this version specifically because my friend had it. Uh, my friend who I'm actually seeing in about 10 minutes. <laughs> um, seeing in about 10 minutes. Uh, it's Metro Prime Hunter's First Hunt. So this is a demo version of my actual favourite game, which is Metro Prime Hunters. I'm not a Metroid fan at all. I don't like Metroid. I, I've tried... Many times. I tried Dread. I thought it was shit. I tried Prime Remastered. I thought it was shit. I've tried to get into Metroid so many times. Um, it's the backtracking. It's the, quite frankly, obtuse um, map, ex map exploration. It's the fact that every time you go into a room, they've respawned the enemies, which... Fuck off. <laughs> if I've killed it, it should be dead. I don't care for backtracking in any form of video game, but this one went, hey, there isn't really any. We've basically made it into Quake 3, and we've added this cool like mechanic where an, a uh, hunter would invade the level you're on. You have to fight them in a mini boss fight, and if you defeat them, you get their weapon, which is cool. That's a cool idea. And the fact that Metro Prime 4 might be building off of Metro Prime Hunters is excellent. All that game needs to win me over is A, bring back all the Hunters from this. I know Silux is back. I know Silux is back, which is cool. But if they bring back the rest and throw in a really good multiplayer, I'm sold. I'll buy Prime 4. Otherwise, I'm not going to touch it with a 10 foot barge pole. It's just not for me. It's not for me. I haven't played 3 yet. I've been meaning to, but yeah. Prime Hunters is just such a fucking good game. I bought this for £10 back in the day. Um, I think instead of buying my sister a birthday card, <laughs> um, I went and then bought her a birthday card, so don't worry. But uh, yeah, I, I went into town with the express purpose of buying her a, buying her a birthday card and I bought this instead. <laughs> I walked home and I went, Shit, I forgot the birthday card. So I had to go back and get one. But um, yeah, Prime Hunters, very solid. Hustily recommend. That's my DS collection. It's not very big. Um, I'm, I'm getting more slowly all the time, like this, like Lost Magic, which I'm still, I'm still in love with that. Fuck, that won't work. It's so simple, but so ghibli. I love it. It's great. Okay, guys, uh, that's it. That's me signing off for another week. Uh, next week we'll be talking about my Xbox Live arcade games that I have physically. Um, that will include things like Magic, um, uh, my Magic Clash of Heroes, things like that. It will be exciting. So uh, until next time, that's me signing off.